Good morning. Actually, it's good afternoon. It's 25 past 12. I, uh, for those of you who've been seeing me recently, uh, you may have noticed today that my uh, my throat, uh, my, the voice that's coming out is um, uh, about basso profundo. I've turned into a double bass for some reason. Uh, well, actually, I had a cold over the last three days, but my mind's been pretty active. And I'm uh, through the sore throat phase, I think, and uh, just on the tail end of it. So uh, uh, that that's the reason why my tone of voice has changed. But I'm on a streak here, I think, of just trying to pursue a line of thought in astrological thinking which addresses the critics and uh, addresses the basis upon which astrology is uh, founded. Just delving into that and uh, thinking about the very basis of mind and activity that astrologer does. Now, it is perhaps uh, a problem for some astrologers to, when I applauded people like um, uh, Sam Harris and um, uh, James Randi for those are the two prominent figures that always uh, kind of have something to say against astrology. But I, I think to what they're addressing, as, it, as I said in previous videos, is only partial, which is why I think they're wrong to just wipe out astrological thought or astrological practice, because it's based on a very narrow view. But the, the, the narrow view uh, of it is that in some way astrology is built on a fantasy thinking or mythic thinking or a, a delving into symbols, what is otherwise called the paleologic thinking, which was uh, connected often to um, uh, problems in schizophrenia, where the thought processes of the rational mind, the Aristotelian logic of uh, sense and meaning and context of interpretation is destroyed or, or, or taken away. But the interesting thing about that is when uh, there is a schizophrenic break in someone, the layers of thought, and schizophrenia used to be called thought disorder, the, uh, the level of mind or trying to piece things together in, in a sense of meaning and understanding the world is then based on a symbolic logic. And I'm in agreement with Silviano um, Arietti, who wrote the the Bible on schizophrenia, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the interpretation of schizophrenia, who, who also based some of his um, thinking on uh, von Domerus, Alexander von Domerus, who was uh, a lecturer and, and, and so on in Berlin in his later days. Um, but I don't want to do too much biography. Um, uh, you can look up these people if, if you wish to explore the, the, these themes and these people further. Um, but what they said is that um, something happens in, in a schizophrenic break where the, the um, thought processes of they become overwhelmed. And we may not like to think of it this way, but um, Aristotelian thought, um, which is logical, which is consistent, which is rational, which is deductive, which is discursive reasoning, to, to think along uh, logical lines in order to move forward in, in life in a reasonable way, is a, in many ways a bulwark against more the superstitious kind of thinking. And this is, uh, I suppose, a caution which should be brought in here because astrologers or some some people drawn to symbolic systems such as the tarot and astrology and the runes or the Kabbalah or uh, uh, perhaps even the I Ching although that's a very sophisticated oracle built on um, uh, Taoism um, but there's still another one that one can start to use these systems of interpretation and symbolic logic as a replacement for uh, making their own decisions and decisions um, and uh, sometimes uh, astrology can be used as a form of omenic guidance as I talked about a divinatory kind of uh, quality to it and it does indeed uh, tell, tell people when things are coming along what patterns are appearing in their life but as I say this tends to appeal to the superstitious and it can lead to a, a, a form of fear um, as a teacher of astrology since I would say since 1988 yeah that's when I first started teaching astrology 
you often come across uh, students that say, oh, well, I have Saturn coming up to my sun. Does this mean, mean to say I'm going to be burdened with something heavy in my life? Well, they don't say it like that, but they often have a, excuse me, a fear about it or they're going to go through a Pluto transit and so and, and they see it coming up in a couple of years and this kind of heavy thought process dis de de descends due to the symbolism involved in Pluto death transformation a descent into Hades you know uh, Saturn the greater malefic of life is coming over my son and there'll be a, a massive cloud on me perhaps a, a heavy depression now all of these are, uh, by the way, uh, valid in a literal sense, but one can never really tell how things are going to come out unless you sit with the person. Sometimes a person may need to go through a, a, a difficulty of this kind, or they sense that there's meaning, uh, there's a loss of meaning in life, and a Pluto transit and a Saturn transit, particularly if the Sun, will take one down into a, a, into a, a state where they've lost previously lost touch with their feeling they may get in touch with some deep feeling uh, involved in their lives and go through a transformative process yes indeed it may say something like that but the fear the superstition that this automatically has a baleful influence it's a maleficent it's uh, it's uh, me um, malevolent to, in some way is is a, a reduction into symbolism of a literal kind and this is where um, the schizophrenic thinking is is so important. Somehow, a, a bit aligned with astrology in some way, but the the in the schizophrenic type of changes, at least in the rash, ra rational processes, the cognitive functions, sees things as literal. So, for example, if if in somebody has a dream of a of a woman with a red hat, um, and they meet and then they go out that day and they see a woman in a red hat the automatic assumption is this is the red hatted woman in the dream the the coincidence of events is so stark it's not a mere coincidence it is an actualized form and so therefore you're supposed to go up to this woman in the red hat and meet her and talk to her and say i met you in a dream so there is a confusion of the symbolic reality and literal reality and astrology plays around with this um, these links between a symbolic underlying mythic dimension to life perhaps even magical thinking and the reality of the outer world what you might call a, a, a moving in and out of these planes of reality and the appearance of the symbol outside but the appearance of an astrological symbol outside is um, it's not preordained exactly about how it will appear. I think fated dimensions of life, you can you can see some of them, uh, I think, with astrology, but not the actual. It's it's as if their uh, astrology is more omen like that people going to uh, the Delphic Oracle as such and going through the preparations to receive information and uh, uh, to receive guidance. There was always some kind of enigmatic um, statement not you will do this or you will do so and so and never more the case is this in in horary astrology where we see uh, placements uh, um, things taking place or unfolding in the future often to do with the uh, the, the, the progression of the moon in, in, in relation to the significators you can start to see developments take place and um, but it's still up to the person to take up those ideas if you want you know if you're in a chart with uh, to do with wh wh where's my missing watch or where's my missing ring or whatever it is the the person still has to take up the symbolism and move with it at a particular time and investigate it for themselves if the person decides not to listen to the horror chart and doesn't do anything then it's not preordained that the person is going to find their ring and this idea about lost articles and honorary astrology particularly is interesting because it means it involves the participation of the person to make things uh, appear. So it's more like a, a, as I say, a participation within the symbolism and, a, and a, an as if quality brought to it, uh, as if it could apply in some way. 
So this whole idea of literalism and symbolism coming together um, is, a, is, is a mysterious um, uh, arena or a, 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 a place that needs more exploration. Because it's often the case that um, uh, some astrologers who are too literal, a placement comes around, such as, let's say, uh, Jupiter on the Ascendant, uh, and you think, ah, oh, well, all kind of abundance is going to come out. Um, I, I, I fell into that myself a bit uh, back in, what was it, I think 2016, that's right, when I have a a Virgo ascendant and Jupiter was coming round to Virgo and in my natal chart I had Jupiter in the fifth house in Aquarius. Now the fifth house has a lot to do with uh, games and fun and things like that and um, I play poker and so I, I thought uh, all these connections of symbolism that this was possibly going to be my time that I was going to win a major tournament of some kind because I've been playing poker a long time and Jupiter was coming across the ascendant just as I was going to the tournament now what kind of span it for me that this idea that this this year is going to be the year or I had high hopes let's say which is a very Jupiterian uh, I always have this uh, thing aside that say well I know that symbolism um, is only symbolism and not actuality uh, but nevertheless Jupiter in the fifth house uh, gambling games poker things like that Jupiter has a fascination often with gambling because it is to do with the possibility of gaining luck or, or, or all of that uh, a line of symbolism that comes from Jupiter uh, and so often reflects a, a gambler a risk taker a person putting all their money you know on the spin of a wheel or something it's all very jupiterian if it comes in you know that, that luck is with you and you've been you've been benighted with a kind of fortune or something like that anyway the what got it down for me pat was that the tournament that i played in is in england and it's called the goliath and of course, the symbolism of Jupiter has everything to do with big or better or more, because it is the planet of the principle of expansion, of going out, of hugeness, of size, of massiveness. In many ways, it rules the principle of elastication, which can kind of stretch out or ballooning and um, things like that. So the symbolism can, can stretch out this magnanimity, that this amplification of things represents the amplification of sound. And we have this principle in us um, to expand out our horizons in the ego. And that's why it's related to travel and uh, longer distance and future plannings and high hopes and uh, all of that kind of enterprise. And in many ways, it is the placement, or I think Sagittarius too, is the can have exaggerated expert expectations to use a phrase from um, uh, Boston again, the idea that, uh, um, that somehow these high hopes, these fantasies could be, could come true. Um, but unless we had any romantic fantasies about life or force or hopes, uh, we would all be just in a material world, in a, a, a factual reality without any uh, uh, expectations of the future. It's just this carefulness, the consciousness of that part of us needs to be brought down to earth. It's OK having a vision of things and uh, an idea, but then you still have to get down to the, the, the mechanics of putting that idea into practice. So the Goliath tournament, there it was, Jupiter came, so it comes over my uh, ascendant and I'm playing and I'm playing on the first day and I got through to the final four tables, it's a three day tournament and um, it's the final hand, so it's the, uh, uh, we've been playing about 12, 13 hours and um, put it this way, um, I had a possible 14 cards to improve my hand and I didn't need to improve it because I had ace jack and jack was on the board, uh, two diamonds, two diamonds were there and I had, I had top pair and top flush, if that means anything to the viewer. And then the other guy just had a single five. That's all he had, so five off, no diamond. And he got a five right on the river card, which is, um, uh, uh, it was terrible. And I was all in for my 126,000 chips, which had been accumulated over the course of 12 hours and I lost. 
So rather than having that high, it was a fall from a great height because I felt things were going my way. You know, if I'd won that hand, I would have been into the next bit of the tournament and, and onto the second day with a, a great wodge of chips in front of me. That would have been good. So that did not turn out. And instead of the high that I would have, I had the great fall, which is the other side of Jupiter, of course, the falling down from the expectations that you had of the future. So, so there's a lesson, there's a caution there in projecting into symbolism what you would hope. And I think nothing, uh, I, but perhaps I, um, I didn't entirely, of course, I didn't take that literally, but I, I fell into it. And so my disappointment was rather large too. I think that can happen with Jupiter. In many ways, the Sagittarian element to Jupiter is this, um, this going up into, as I say, the, the, the grand vision of the future. And then unfortunately, it doesn't work out. And so there's a big fall to, uh, as well, a very manic planet in many ways. Um, but uh, I'd like to talk also about um, how this strange world of, of imagination and dream and symbolic reality can actually work through and can actually uh, appear in life as a form of guidance. Now, it was my privilege to, to be part of a group um, quite a few years ago in, um, in the 90s, I think the mid 90s, um, with a man called Anthony Lunt. Now, although we f fell out uh, later, that didn't matter to me in terms of his erudition, his clarity of thinking and his brilliance in his own way. Uh, I was part of a group, I was part of a dream group, which uh, participated in the group dream. Now, um, th that's all a precursor to the fact that the other day, I had a dream of my former supervisor in the psychotherapy center where I worked. I haven't seen him for more years and years, perhaps over 10 years or so, perhaps even more than that, 20 years. I had a dream with him. I had a dream with him in, and it was a dream of a new kind of strange treatment that was being undertaken uh, for, a, for a disease or something that was important. And uh, I, told him that uh, uh, there was this treatment to be had. Now, what Ant the point about Anthony Lunt was working with dreams is when anybody appears in your dreams, he had this idea that it would be a good idea to, to ring them as well, to, to actually recontact. So I contacted um, my former supervisor and it turns out that he was undergoing uh, a new form of treatment because he has uh, a, a, an illness at the moment which is uh, uh, which is difficult to to sustain this and so he was undergoing a new form of treatment that was the first thing he also told me that anthony lunt had died three months later i found no um uh, there was no nothing online about anthony lunt and, and so on so i wanted to uh, say that here that uh, he was a, a great specialist, a great mind that has been uh, lost out of the world um, only very recently. But that's an example about how the dream can somehow contact other planes of reality and get something through if it was meaningful. And it was only through that instruction of Anthony Lunt that I was able to do this. So I'm hoping to meet my supervisor when I go to London and do astrology lectures in, in mid-November. The other thing is that I had a dream in uh, 2014 where I would actually win the Poker Masters in Bristol. And it told me the amount of money that I would win, £10,000, and uh, it told me that I win. And in fact, over the course of two days, I did win, and I did win that amount of money. So there was a precognitive dream. And so to dismiss this kind of symbolic underpinning, this something, some element of life can come through the unconscious, through symbolism, through some other form, if you like, of um, guidance or knowledge is, is not beyond things. This is where the critics of astrology or those people that uh, work in this kind of line of development, this, this line of knowledge, um, uh, 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 the criticism of those is um, 
is, is based upon the idea that most of them just work at pre-logical magical thinking levels, which is not right. We work in, or should work in, an as-if. Uh, but the danger or the caution uh, that I'm saying to astrologers is that um, to, to move into this realm and to automatically think that these things pertain to a, a literal actualization of the symbol and to think that that's absolutely the case is also a problem. So I'll just leave it there.